Hello, today we're gonna work on painting a peacock feather with watercolors, and I'm gonna show you how to do it with just these eight colors. So you don't have to have a giant set of paints. I'll be mixing in my paint palette here, but if you don't have one of these, most people don't, you can mix in the lid of your paint pan. So when you open up your paint pan, you'll see that there are sections. You can mix in those sections. Um, I like this because it fits on my screen a little bit better and you can see it. So I have here, very exciting, brand new paints, brand new paintbrush, yay. I have here, this is a watercolor piece of a peacock feather. And then this is a photograph of a peacock feather. So we can look at the reality and kind of an artist's interpretation. And then I've also drawn some shapes. So I'll sort of show you how to go through and build what we see here. But this is a good way to just get a nice visual of the different zones we'll be painting. Oh, all right, shall we start my friends? First thing, I think let's mix some colors that are gonna look good in our peacock feather. So the way I mix color is to dampen my brush and put some water over here in one of the sections or maybe several sections of my palette because I'm gonna mix a few different colors. And if you have a big watercolor palette that has a whole bunch of colors, then maybe you don't need to mix colors, but I appreciate you bearing with those of us that do need to mix. If you're watching this on your own and you are ready to move on to the painting stage, then you can fast forward through the part where I'm mixing paint. But I'm gonna mix myself. So let's look at the colors we have here. We've got some aquas, some greens, some browns, a kind of a navy blue. So I'm gonna make a lot of little places that we can make paint. I'm gonna give myself a lot of water here. And I know this is tedious, but I also know that if you only have the eight colors, some people have the 16, or some people have like a giant set of watercolors that has so many colors, but we don't all have that. So I'm gonna show you how to make, first of all, I'm gonna move this paper so I don't splash on it. But the first color we're gonna mix is this golden brown. So let's get right into our yellow. We're gonna moisten it so that we can get some of that yellow paint out of it. I'm gonna moisten it up and then where is my water? Okay, there's water in this one. So I'm gonna get this nice and watery with yellow. And I want it to be very loose, very watery. I don't want it to be too saturated with color. So let's put a little more water in. So that's our yellow. And then we'll add some brown. And I don't wanna add a lot of brown. I'll add a little bit of brown at a time just until we get it to this lovely sort of a golden, kind of a golden beigey color. But see, when you put a little too much brown in there, it goes very brown very quickly. So I'm gonna try to keep it nice and watery. So there's that lovely golden brown. Next, we need this color that's kind of a greenish, it's like a greenish goldish blue. So I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow and then some green. So let's get that green nice and wet. I love a new set of paints. Oh, it makes me very, very happy. Very excited to do all of the painting. So this is gonna be starting with regular green. I added a little bit of yellow to it. I'm gonna keep adding some green and then we'll add just a bit of blue to it. So I'm gonna get my blue, go in there, really get it nice and wet. These brushes that are white uh, immediately are not white when we start <laughs> using our paint with them, right? All right, so this is a greenish blue. And remember to get this color lighter on our paper and not be so dark, we just have to mix more water with it. That's gonna help us out. So we're gonna make a peacock feather with the tools we have. If it doesn't look exactly like a very realistic peacock feather, that's gonna be okay with me because anyone's gonna look at this and go, oh, it's a peacock feather. All right, so I have this bluish color. And when we paint on paper with this color, let's see, this isn't watercolor paper, so it's not gonna be an amazing texture, but that's gonna be kind of that color 
And this one's going to be kind of golden. All right, so oh, we need that more of a yellowish green. So let's go over here and I've got some yellow and some green. I don't need as much green. When we put the darker colors in, they really take over the lighter colors. So I'm going to keep this a, a true yellow green. And if we need to maybe add a little blue to it later, we can do that. And I'm not worrying if these paints start getting dried up because I can reactivate them with water whenever I want. I'm very tempted to put some blue in there, but I'm not going to do it. Okay, so we have our green, we have our brown, we have some teal. Now we need a light blue. So this is going to start with just blue and we're going to leave it very pale. So it's super, super light, nice and watered down. We don't need to put any white in there. White can make watercolor very, very muddy. And I don't love that. I'm going to take a tiny little dab like the tiniest dab I can get of yellow and put it in there just to bring it to a little bit of a warmer place. But you know, I, re I don't think that was super necessary. All right, and next we need dark blue. So let's make a, I'm gonna get a lot of blue in my brush and go in here and make it darker. So let's make a nice dark blue. And this is only blue so far. Let's make a nice dark blue. I'm going to go back and get more pigment for this lovely dark blue. And it's so blue, it's almost like, look how electric that is. That's so beautiful. And this blue is very, it's almost black, but blue. So I like the way this artist chose to keep the edges that very dark color and then the center is lighter. So we've got our blue and now I'm going to make a blue that's got some black in it. So let's get more blue. I, I run out of blue first in my paints. I don't know what you run out of. A lot of people run out of yellow first. I run out of blues first because I tend to paint a great deal of blues. If you're running out of little spaces in your palette to mix these paints, you can kind of do a half and half. And this is just made of porcelain. It's not a special, you know, it's it's nothing special. So you can always use a plate or if you have like a little ramekin in your house. So this is gonna be the darkest blue that I have. And I'm gonna add black, but I'm not going to go overboard with my black. I want to get to where just I have just a little bit of black because it very quickly, as you can see, will go black. So I may need to add a tiny bit more blue. I want it to stay bright. I don't want it to get dark and dull. So we're doing well. This is great. So we have a lot of the colors we need. Let's see. Are there any colors that we really haven't made that we need? Let's make another. Let's see, we've got green and green and green blue. Let's make a blue with a little bit of purple in it. Just, I don't know if we'll need it, but let's see. Let's make another blue. Blue, blue, blue. Do we do purple? No, let's do like a blue, a brownish blue. So then this is brown and I'm getting some brown and mixing that with my blue. So then we have this, that's terrible. It needs more blue in it. Okay, lots more blue. I went very overboard with the brown. So I'm gonna get a lot more blue, mix that in there. Then we have this cool brown that I think we might be able to work in at some point. So there's our nice cool brown. So we've got our warm brown up here, kind of a honey, honey brownish. And then this is our, our cooler brown. And I think this will give us enough to get started with. I'm gonna rewater this because it looks like it's getting all a little bit dry. And then I do this because I wanna squeeze all the paint out of this brush <laughs> that we just made. And then I think we're ready to go. So, oh. 
pull that watercolor paper back over here. I may or may not use these paints, but I know I'm gonna use these paints. So I'll keep them handy and then here we go to get started with our peacock feather. I wanna make sure that you can see everything I'm working with. So let's get it all in the picture. All right, the first part, let's start with this outer ring, which is kind of blue. Well, no, let's start with a little tiny, oh, there's a feather, an actual feather on my paper. And I'm trying not to touch my paper a lot with my hands because what will happen is the oils on my hands will get all over my paper and this lovely loose watercolor is not going to want to stick. Sometimes the pigment settles, so you gotta go back in and mix it up. All right, we're gonna start with the very center. So we're gonna go into our darkest blue. Oh, that's not it. <laughs> oh, we're gonna go into this lovely navy dark blue that we made. And let's look at this shape here. Let me turn this to where it's the same orientation as the painted one. There we go. So let's I'm gonna zoom in a little tiny bit so you can get just to the paper. And we're gonna make that shape. And it's sort of, I'm gonna be right here in the center of my paper because I know I want some floofy things going upward. So this shape is small and it's sort of like a heart, but it's very, curvy at the bottom. So it's just this nice little heart shape. It's curvy at the bottom. And I have a rogue brush hair. Get out of there. Sometimes on a new brush, you gotta deal with that. And I do, I keep a paper towel handy. All right, so I'm gonna keep adding a little more of this color to the outside. Then I'm gonna dip straight in my blue and add some of that blue in the center. And I might come and put a little bit of black straight out of the palette right around the edges of this. So let's see if we can get it to be dark, but then have that light glow in the center. And if this is too dark, we can do our magic trick where we dry out our brush and we lift away a little bit of that paint. So this is gonna be the darkest part of our feather. So I'm lifting away. I'm trying not to brush my paper too hard because that is going to anger it and make it pill and rip. So then I'm gonna go into this blackish blue that I made, my navy blue, perhaps we can just call it navy and dot it around that black. So the black doesn't take over. Ooh, yeah, that's nice. And it's okay if it's very watery. I'm okay with that for now, because this is gonna be my deepest, darkest shape. And then I'm gonna get a little bit of blue straight out of the pan and go right inside that black. But I like the way it's staying a little bit lighter just through the center. And we still can see those different colors. I don't know if this is showing for you because my light is, there's a lot of glare. My apologies. I can light this up or make it dark. So I, I choose to light it up. And as you go, then you notice that you're getting a lot of water on the edges you can lift that paint off and it'll get a little brighter through the center. What I want is to be able to see the blues and the blacks and still have some lightness through that center. All right, so I'm gonna add a little more blue. You can just play with this. If yours is the way you want it, you don't have to keep doing this. If you've got it exactly where you want it, let it be. I feel like this is the most important part of the peacock feather. This is that mesmerizing, beautiful center. Oh, it's so pretty. All right, we'll back out now. And this is gonna need to dry a little bit. I'm noticing mine is kind of going toward the edges so I can bend my paper and kind of have that paint 
scoot around inside that shape. And what I want to make sure it's not going to do is bleed outside of this shape. But those boundaries are drying, so it's great. All right. Now let's go. We're not going to paint right next to this part right now. We're going to add this golden brown. So let's go into our lovely golden brown color. And we're going to make a larger circle. We're going to make a light blue circle around this eventually. But right now, we're going to make kind of a teardrop shape. Doesn't have to be perfectly symmetrical. We're going to make this sort of teardrop shape. And then we'll leave room for when we're going to add later that lighter blue. But for now, it's almost like we're making a little shape, but we're leaving a moat. We're gonna leave that moat for our light blue. And this can be nice and watery. And let's go all the way around that edge with this beautiful brown color. And then while it's still wet, I'm gonna go back into this navy blue that we made. I'm gonna mix it up to make sure those pigments are still in a good place. And I'm gonna squeegee a little bit of it out of my brush. I don't want a lot, but we're gonna go right around the edge here and just run a tiny line of it right around the edge. And I'm not blending this at all. I am barely touching it to the edge. It's almost like an outline, except that it's it's an outline on the inside. So it's a, we're just sharing that space. And if you go outside a little bit, that's okay. Just make it bigger <laughs> like I have done. All right. So that's sort of a seeping. And then I'm gonna take a small break and do some fanning. So I have just a piece of paper here that I'm going to fan it with. Nothing complicated. Just to get it drying a little bit. I don't want it to dry completely. It's okay. It doesn't have to. I want to sort of keep that blue on the outside. <laughs> An eyelash fell on my painting there. So let's get the edges, the border, that blue dried. Great. Then I'm gonna grab some of this teal that we made and I'm remixing each time because it does kind of, those pigments kind of settle once you water it down and I'm gonna squeegee a whole bunch of that out of my brush. And on this inside part, I'm going to just add that green. That nice, pretty, ooh, it can travel like that. That's all right. A beautiful green is going to be on this edge. This is very dreamy. I think the key to success here is to try to just use that tippy, tippy tip of your brush. And I'm going to make this thicker. I want more more paint, more thickness, more darkness in here. So maybe I will mix a color that is green and black and blue. Or maybe just green and black. Let's see what happens with green and like a teeny tiny bit of black. Suddenly it's very dark, but I think that's going to work for this. Okay, so I'm going to go just along the edge with my nice dark blackish green. Perfect. Maybe a little more green in there. And then kind of just add this to these edges until I'm happy with what's going on. I like it. It's looking great. And I think what I'm going to do is add a little tiny bit of this bright green to just the edges of this. So this is getting, this is like very extra but I think it's gonna look nice. So let's add, ooh, that was a lot. Just a little bit of green so that as it seeps out into that brown, it's got a little brightness to it. 
All right, so that's working well. I hope that you're enjoying watching all of these colors just blend. It's really fun for me, so I hope it's fun for you. At this point, it's looking a little like an avocado, isn't it? That's kind of fun. All right, I splashed a little in here with my green. I need a little more of this yellowish brown color, so let's bring in some brown. And then I'm gonna bring in some yellow. Now my yellow has gotten nice and wet, so it's a little bit more yellow. Oh, this green is like coming over the wall, gosh. Okay, this is still watered down. So I'm going to, I'm making sure that the place where I'm dotting this is wet still because I want that seeping action. So I'm just gonna dot it between the blue and the green. And if you find that your um, this part of your feather is still very wet and your paint is all just running all over the place, I would suggest take a moment and fan it. And that way, all right, so now I have a lot of paint on here. It's a little drier here, so I've just dipped into my water and I'm gonna reactivate all this paint so that it will kind of blend together. And hopefully you're still able to see the blue and the brown and the green. If not, you can come back in with some of those colors. I'm gonna grab a little bit more of this blue for my top edge here and just let it get nice and saturated through there. And this is annoying me, so I'm gonna dry off my brush and I'm gonna say, excuse me, no thank you. Get back up there, blue. And then if I want this space to have that, that golden color, I'll just grab a little bit of that golden color and dip it right there and then allow it to take over. So it's drying beautifully. And to get it running together, we can, again, pick up our paper and kind of go side to side, back and forth. And I'm really happy with the way this is looking. So I'm gonna fan just a little bit. This is just a piece of junk mail. I have that I'm fanning with. Good times. <laughs> What I want to dry right now is this inner edge right here. Maybe that outer edge too can dry. That would be lovely. Please dry outer edge. I think the outer edge is good. Um, let's see, how do we feel about this inner edge? I don't know. Let's go ahead, let's get some green. And we're gonna do similar to what we did here where we are leaving some space. Let's get our, our light green. And we're gonna make another, but we're gonna leave space, okay? So we're not touching. You don't have to leave a lot of space. I just want you to not quite touch it yet. So we're gonna make a boundary of our pretty yellow green up here. So let's get real close, but we're not gonna just gonna touch it yet. So we'll get close, but not touch it. If you do touch it, no problem. We will eventually mix those together, but we want those edges to get a little bit dry first. You can turn your paper if that's helpful. I don't wanna rest my hand on my wet paint, so I turned my paper so I can do it this way. Have a little more control. There we go. Just enjoy making that lovely little shape. And you can make this come up to a point if you want. So there's that nice little pointy shape. We're not gonna touch just yet. Let's wait just a moment to touch those edges. And then I'm gonna get some of that, it's like that very dark kind of blackish green that we made. And I will dot that around, kind of around this outer border to get some lovely, letting the paint mix however 
it decides to mix that kind of action. Ah, that was a lot of mixing. <laughs> oh, it's so funny how I say, oh, yes, let's let the paint do what it wants to do. And then it does, and I immediately say, no, that's not what I wanted you to do, paint. That sounds like me, doesn't it? All right, so then, let's go in. What should we do next? Let's get some of this bluish black and sort of just run along this other edge. And this is where we can join it to that other layer. And we don't have to blend it. We can just run over that edge because that edge has dried kind of nicely to give us a border. So I'm just gonna gently run that same color over it. And we might still get to keep some of that hard edge but we have the separation. So that is exactly what I was hoping would happen. And you can get some more, just a regular blue and put it in there. If yours is getting light like mine is, I want it to be a little darker. So I'm simply dotting this blue along that boundary there. And it's all kind of running into the other layers and that is totally okay. I'm fine with that. Oh, I love it. It's looking wonderful. Okay little dots but I want to make sure I do have some of that lovely light green showing through because that's really pretty. You can even come back. I'm going to mix a little more. Let's get some of that yellow. Add a little more green to it. It's my yellow and green and I'm going to dot some of that through here where I perhaps have started losing some of that color to the ones that I asked it to blend with. All right, so this is looking really great. The center section here, we wanna use a light blue. And the way we do, of course, with watercolor, light blue is to just water down the blue a lot. I'm gonna run a fan over it real fast. The name of the game with this next little part is going to definitely be light, 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 light blue. So I'm not adding, I'm going to mix this back up because it's settled, but I want a very light, light watered down blue. And bear in mind, it doesn't matter if the paint around it blends in, like if this edge blends a little bit, that's all right. I'm going to try not to blend that center part because I would like for that to stay pretty sharp if we can. And if it doesn't, if it starts to dissolve a little bit, we can go over it later uh, with more color. So I'm not super worried. Yeah, see if it if it does a little bit of bleeding like that into the light blue, we're good. It's fine. We can come and kind of add a ring later. Yeah, all right. Okay. I'm gonna skate this edge here and see what happens. Ooh, that's kind of fun. Okay, now I'm going into my less watered down blue and I'll add some of that there. And I can slowly add more blue color to this until I get the, the color that I want. Thinking about our reference images and how I want it to resemble those or how I want it to be different from those. So I like the way this is looking. I'm pretty happy with it. And I'm gonna grab some blue straight out of the paint pan and go around my edge here by this green. So that green is kind of drying. It's not dry in all the places, but I think I can get a little bit more of a concentrated line there now. So I'm just gonna skate the edge. I'm gonna let that middle part stay a little bit light and then we're gonna get this good and dry so let's dry 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 if you've got a hair dryer and you're confident using it you could bring that in at this point otherwise we can just hang out and chat while this dries if you have some pooling places and you're thinking 
Mm, it's too much. We can go in, dry off our brush. Ooh, my brush is turning a really fun color. Okay, dry off our brush and pull that paint off. Then what I'll do is kind of say like, all right, all this water can now go here and that's fine with me. It's doing a little bit of that action over here. So I'm gonna remove it gently and then I'll just allow these to all hang out together. Now, this is a little bit through the center. It's kind of dry, but still kind of wet. So I can pull some of this off and it looks almost like a glare. So it just gives it a tiny bit more life. All right, so now we can, we can dry. You can get a dryer out, you can do whatever, but we wanna get it. It doesn't have to be super duper duper dry. We just wanna get it sorta of dry. Oh, I love all these colors, they're so pretty. And for the outside of your peacock feathers, if you're somebody who likes to integrate, you know, purple into your decor, or you just, you really enjoy purple, I think you can add that here as well. So while the middle is drying, we can start adding like the, the floofy parts around the feather. So I think I'm gonna go, let's look at this one. Let's see, feather, how are you working? So we have a lot of like pretty greens that are coming up. So I think I'm gonna do like one more brown layer just around the edge that's sort of wide and it's thinner at the top, thicker at the bottom, very thin at the top, very much thicker at the bottom. And then I'm going to get dry. So I'm going to get my little dryer and run it over this. Right. Sometimes that dryer will make the paper curl as it has done, but we are good to go. Now my paper is a little warpy, but that's okay. I can smash it in a book after I'm done with this and I'll have nothing to worry about. Okay. I'm going to briefly go back into this navy blue and I'm going to add a little circle here to define that section. So there's my definition of that middle section. And then I'm going to add one around kind of that green and then maybe in through the brown. All right. And I'm going to start making a little bit of a feathery texture through here. How about that? I'm going to just paint. This is almost just water, but I'm painting some little feathery feeling. I'm getting very, very little paint on the brush and it's very watered down. So you can see there's not much, but I'm gonna paint some little kind of vertical stripes to make it feel like that feather has some texture. And we can be very, you know, we don't have to be real precise with this. And I'm gonna take some of this green and add some little tiny stripes throughout my green. These are just very simple, very, very simple little, it's not a specific shape, but it's gonna add texture to what we already have down there. So that when we add all of these extra feathers, it's gonna still feel textured inside. So then I'm gonna go into my darkest, dark, dark, dark. And I'm really gonna squeegee out because I don't want a lot of paint here. And I am going to just make some easy little lines all throughout here, simply to give it some texture. So it's getting really, really texturized now. Oh, 
and then we can start on kind of the structure of the feather. So this edge is all dry, and the structure of my feather, I'm probably gonna stay in these colors for now, but it's gonna kind of have, let's see, so it's gonna have the stem of the feather, it's gonna come down from here. So let's think about that. And it's gonna come kind of up and around, up and around. So it looks like we have a tiny stem on a big giant flower. And we are gonna make those absolutely, it's just the most satisfying brush stroke to make. I'm gonna get some of this greenish black that we have. And I don't need my brush loaded full, but let's start just at the very tip. We come out and then we smush down and come up. So we have set the boundary for this feather now we can add a little more paint to the paper and then this tip is going to be nice and pointy while the middle of that little feather piece can be a little fatter and if you want to add more color to it like if you want to dab some brown in there you can and we'll do that you can turn the paper if it's easier for your hand but we'll do that kind of all around going upward and these don't have to be transparent these can be dark if you like the nice dark feel to it and I'm going to add some more of these so these are just our lovely little feather pieces and they don't all have to be going the same way like we can have one that's going downward there's where some oils from my hand got on the page so that's why the paint is not sticking as well so if you're having that problem that that could be it. Could be what happened. So I want these to be sort of darker. And then I'll come and get some of this color and dot it throughout. You don't have to do this dotting. I just really thoroughly enjoy it, so I'm doing it. But these feathers are a nice place for you to just play and do whatever you'd like to try, whatever you want to see. And I'm going to make these feathers overlap. So I'm going to work my way upward. And then as I get to the top, maybe these will be dry and I can come back in another little bit of a color. So then these are going to be kind of, you're going to come upward. And we're going to keep having more of these little feathers that come around and up. originating from the original point of all these beautiful colors. So I'm adding these. And I can start at this brown part too. They don't have to all come off the very edge. And then, as these are sort of happening, I'm going to add a little more shape up here. And we can start using some of the other colors that we have. To add some depth and definition to these feathers here at the tip. So I can also do these little feathery pieces, kind of like the branches we've done, but they can be going upward, downward, any direction. The feathers are long, of course, so they'll be going kind of up and around, they might be, they'll be going off the page. You can throw some browns in there too. And it doesn't matter if these kind of run together because I think that just makes it look even more lovely. So we can go into all these colors we have over here and add feathers. And then come back up here and add a little more darkness. So you can just 
play around with those colors, see what happens. I feel like I need a little more, a little more drama up here. Maybe a little more of my darker color heading toward that center. Some blues. Now you can just start mixing your paint like a, however you want. And then we can come back in and kind of go around these with more definition if we want. And add as much as you want. But this is kind of how it goes. I'm going to put some speckles on this one because I think peacock feathers are just asking for speckles. Uh, but I don't know if I want to do it just yet. I'm going to add a little more of my dark and dramatic lines up here. Get some of that beautiful dark blue happening. I think that the name of the game here is just get as much depth and overlap as you can. And if you need to dry this bottom part before you put more colors on, that's all right too. Let's try that. I'm going to I'm going to put some more through this bottom part because so I am just loving the way it's coming out, but I need it to be fuller, fuller of peacock goodness, full of peacock goodness. And then I can get them as they dry. And as I have these outer layers, I can get these little wispy looking ones. And that really gives us the feel of the floaty peacock feathers. I want some down at the bottom, but I've got all of that finger oil down here. <laughs> it, is, it is sassing me. But that's, that's the way of the world. We're human. We do have oils on our hand. This art is just for fun art for me, so I'm not as worried about, you know, if I was doing this for someone and I knew that they would be very picky about my finger oils, I might do something to prevent it. But right now, this art is just for me. This is my fun time art, my time to spend with you having a good time. Um, so I'm not as worried about it here. And I can come up here and add some more lovely leaves. I'm gonna just hold on to it with my fingernail. But I can continue to come around and add those feathers as long as I want to. Um, you know, you can come back to this tomorrow, add more feathers. It just depends on how much time you have, how much paint you have, how much paper you have, and when you decide that you would like to be finished. All right, I'm trying to fill in this little one space right here. There we go. All right, so I think I'm done now. Um, I'm going to do some speckles though. Like I said, I do like thoroughly enjoy the speckles. Oh, I did tell you I was done and I'm still messing with it. I need somebody here to just say, Casey, stop messing with it. It's okay. You're done. <laughs> All right. My speckles on this one, I'm going to make some brownish yellow speckles. I think that'll be pretty. And I want them to be really watery, really small. Speckles are simply a way to add a little dimension and drama to what you're doing. I don't like them to be overwhelming, so I am going to make them pretty watery. So I'm just getting paint in my brush. I'm going to squeegee a little bit of paint out. And then I have something else that I'm going to tap it on, so I'm going to just tap it all over. You see how that's kind of giving us some interesting little, it doesn't feel so flat to me. Some people hate speckles. I, that is definitely an individual choice. If they're not for you, don't use them. And if you have some stuff around your painting that you don't want speckles to get on, you want to be uh, noticing that as well, because I'm working at my art desk where pretty much everything has speckles on it. So it's okay with me if it gets all speckly. <laughs> But that might not be okay for where you're working. So think twice. Um, if it's not a great environment for speckling, if you are um, 
you know, going to get speckles on other people's things, then perhaps that's not a choice you make right now. We do want to be respectful of the stuff around us. Blur. But it is watercolor, so if it gets on, you know, sometimes I get a little, a little bit of speckles on my computer. But they wipe right off with a just a damp paper towel. But you can decide if speckles are appropriate for your environment. If they are, to your heart's content, add speckles. If they're not, maybe, maybe on your next project, when you're in a little more sort of a freer space, you can do speckles. You can also just tap with your hand and that's gonna yield you a tiny bit of a different result with your speckles. So it's up to you what you wanna do, how you want them to look. And I'm working on a smaller piece of paper because I like to give you a project that you can finish in a shorter amount of time. And if you wanna do this on a larger piece of paper, uh, that might be pretty awesome. I think I'm gonna put some black speckles on here. Oh, maybe I'm gonna put some blackish purple speckles just to bring some purple in there. Woo, yeah. All right, I'm gonna get some more purple. Oh, this was brand new paint and I have simply made it messy, messy. That's the most fun, isn't it? I love, I love being messy. All right, I'm just gonna do these purpley ones up around the edge while they're big and thick. And then I'll, once they get tiny, I'll add them here. So there is my peacock feather. I'm gonna stop because if I don't, I'll never stop. Um, I will, I will get it all nice and dry. I will sign it. Where can I sign this? There's speckles everywhere. I'll sign it over here. There's some space. Where? Maybe if my pen will work. There we go. I'll dry it and I will take a picture for you once it gets nice and dry. I hope you're having a good time with this. I hope yours is looking amazing. I think it was a wonderful process. I enjoyed I enjoyed just mixing all those beautiful colors. I enjoyed watching them melt together on this page and become this peacock feather. So thank you for joining me and I hope to see you back again. Check out some of the other videos. Art is so good for your brain. It's so good for a little bit of stress relief, some time that's just for you. And remember when you're making art like this, this is a time for you to make all of your own creative decisions. And even if you don't know exactly what you're going to take the next step to do, anything you decide is okay. This is a time for you to be free within your own creative expression. If other people are hanging out, trying to tell you what to do, trying to tell you how to make your art, what colors to choose, don't make that so big. That looks funny. <sighs> Sometimes we have to find a nice, respectful way to ask people to give us a little bit of creative space so that we can unwind, we can relax, and it doesn't have to be pleasing to anyone. It doesn't even have to be pleasing to us. As long as we have a good time making this art and we learn to enjoy that process, that's what we want.